For the chess players, why did you decide to make that film in Hindi? Oh, I like the story to begin with. Um, there are many answers to this, not just one answer. I liked the story. I had read it a long, long time ago when it was first translated into English. And then uh, I was a chess addict at one time myself. <laughs> I wanted to pay a sort of tribute to chess. And of late, it has become necessary to make films in color because black and white stock is very poor. Mm -hmm. And the moment you use color, the cost goes up and you have to think of a larger audience because my Bengali films reach a very, very small section of the Indian public. So there you have a, another reason, a bigger audience, therefore a language which is understood more or less all over India, which is Hindi, uh, which is the language. Well, it's not strictly Hindi, it's Urdu, which is a classical form of Hindi. So chess players, and then I was anxious to work with some of these Brom Bombay professional actors who are, I knew were very intelligent people, but who were mostly acting in, in, in very stupid kind of films and unhappy because of that because they're intelligent people and uh, I know some of them personally they've often expressed their wish to work with me so I th thought that well this was a good opportunity and there was Saeed Jaffrey who, whom I'd known before and who I'd seen briefly in a film of Jim Ivory's James Ivory's guru, called The Guru and uh, well, we had talked about acting a little bit and I said that well perhaps someday we'll work together and I found an opportunity to just, uh, you know, call him, and uh, there, there it was. Yeah. In the chess players, um, you have these two parallel stories going on, the King's story and the chess player's story. And never once during the film, which is, seems to be an American custom, that these two are sets of brought characters together, are brought together. Which, uh, formally would be uh, considered a, a, a sort of conventional thing to do right. in order to weave the two together. Yes, I knew I was taking a risk there. But I thought that by, uh, the, towards the end of the film, the thematic link would emerge. And uh, I was prepared to take the risk of this new structure. For me, the thematic link emerged after the film was over. Well, and fine, as long as it emerges. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question indirectly about the chess players. Did you make a definite effort to show a much more empty India, uh, le much less populated India? Because I noticed in, in all the shots that had the streets, except for the scenes with the cockfights and, and the goats. Life flying. And, uh, yeah, that it, it seemed to be a, a, a much emptier India. <laughs> <laughs> Or was that a budget? <laughs> well, uh, no, no, it's not budget really. Actually, there are very few uh, scenes shot on location. If you come, uh, if you, you must have noticed it because Lucknow, where the locations were done, has uh, too many anachronistic elements. So we couldn't use sort of wide shots there, I and mean, we had to be very, very careful to to leave out uh, to, you know, to avoid uh, these elements of electric poles and things like that. And in any case. Uh, uh, you have certain crowd scenes like the cockfight, as you said, and the kite flight. The, the other few location shots are all concerned with this Mr. Mir walking through a lane. There are three or four passers by. There are shots of the lane which are in the daytime very, very deserted anyway. There are, I haven't shown any main streets, you see, where the people would be because of this fact of all the, the, the things of wall posters and uh, motor cars and bicycles and this and that. It was not possible. Perhaps that's a lack in the film. There is, perhaps it should have contained more uh, scenes of crowds to suggest that there is a big population there. Yes? Um, the beginning of the chess play with this use of animation and the tone it strikes, uh, it seems very Brechtian. It seems very what? Brechtian, it Brechtian. seems to draw attention. Oh, I see. Ah. Well, I have to have this, uh, I decided on this prologue when I discovered that not many people were familiar with the political, with, 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 the, with, the, with the background of this uh, event. Even, uh, I'm not talking a foreign audience, but even the Indian audience. I discussed this uh, particular British takeover of this prince's state with many people and th they were a little vague about what exactly happened. Well, they knew what happened, but they didn't know the background, the, the relationship between the British and the Muslims, uh, the Nawabs of that period. 
So I decided that I would set the stage, you know, there was, uh, this prologue was necessary in order to, as a sort of device to set the stage for, thing, for the things that were going to happen. And uh, in order to, uh, <coughs> to relate uh, the events, I, I decided <coughs> on using animation because I couldn't think of a better way of doing it. There was a line in that letter which is quoted in the film, a letter written by Lord Delousey about the cherry, you know, I, I don't know, if you were, the, that's one cherry that's going to drop into our mouths one day. And it seemed to suggest uh, the cartoon form, the animation form. And in fact, the decision to use animation arose from that particular line in the letter. And since I used it once, I thought of using it twice. The jocularity of the, the um, voiceover, is that the way it's told is a yes. children's story? Mm -hmm. Is that very much on purpose? Or? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, yes. Yes. Do you always enjoy the shooting? Yes. Every stage of it, uh, not just shooting. First, it's finding a story which excites you. Secondly, it's converting it into uh, the terms of a screenplay. Third is casting, which I do myself, even new people. I mean, they just come to my house. They knock on the door, and there's somebody waiting outside, too, with acting ambitions. And I usually keep a photograph and a, you know, his name and address and vital statistics. And then, eventually, I may send for him. It's happened many times. And then, of course, costume, design, set. I sit down with my art director planning, getting the props for this particular film, uh, the chess players. All the props are period props. All the shawls, the, decor the lovely ornamental things which the characters wear, some of them have, have come from museums. They're not, none of them less than 250 years old. And uh, they're real, real precious stuff. And there are people in Calcutta that most of them have come from private collections in Calcutta. And then the shooting, which is exciting, in spite of all the odds, and uh, the rushes. And the most exciting of all is uh, sitting with the moviola and cutting, and when the thing comes to life. Another stage, of course, I do my music also. That's exciting again. And mixing, finally. <laughs>